Blood Notes, Part 2. All right, so we left off, talked about hemolytic disease of the newborn. Basically, hemo refers to blood. Lytic is to lice, it's to break. So yeah, the baby, the first baby born to the mom, no problems. If the first baby born is, let's look at the chart here, happens to be type AB blood, and the mom is type A, she does not recognize B as part of her body. The blood does not pass through the to the mom the blood blood cells don't pass through so the mom's nutrients and oxygen stuff passes through the baby as the baby is born though the blood barrier is broken and now the baby's red blood cells are introduced in the mother's blood and now she sees the baby as being the same a different blood type so if they have an Rh positive baby and the mom's Rh negative, the baby will then be, the first baby's fine. The second baby though, if it's also Rh positive and the mom is Rh negative, the mom will have developed antibodies against the Rh antigen. And the second baby, those little antibodies will pass through the blood <clears throat> to protect the baby, but since they're against the baby, they'll actually attack the baby. So that's where we left off. When giving blood, remember type O blood means you have no antibodies. You don't have the A or the B, the big A or the big B. So you can, you're the universal donor, you can donate to anybody. Anybody sees you is fine. Type A only has type A antigen on it, so they can give to type A or type AB. Type B blood can only give to B or type AB because they both recognize it as good. Type AB blood is the universal recipient. They can receive from anybody because they, they recognize the A antigen and the B antigen as being normal. So they don't have antibodies against those. However, they can only receive from AB. I take that back. They can receive from A and they can receive from B. They can receive from anybody, yeah. They can only donate to AB. Got to get my donates and receives correct. Again, practice it. Okay, so now normal blood slide. In your lab, you probably saw something like this. It has three neutrophils, a big old monocyte, some platelets or thrombocytes hanging out in there, and a whole bunch of erythrocytes. All those little pinkish, orangish, reddish discs are erythrocytes. The leukocytes, or white blood cells, again, we've got three neutrophils, and we've got one big old, look like a monocyte. Hematocrit. Hemato, hema means blood. So hematocrit is an important vocab word. It's the percent of erythrocytes in your total blood volume. So if you spun it down, you measured it, the red blood cells, that percent of the total blood volume is your hematocrit. Newborns have a high hematocrit. They're just sucking that oxygen in. They're growing fast. They got thicker blood. Males tend to have a little higher hematocrit than females, mainly because adult females lose a large percent of blood once, not a large percent, but they lose quite a bit of red blood cells once a month. So they're trying to keep up. Plus, males on the average tend to be more active. Not always, but tend to be. This is just fun to look at. Up in the top left of this diagram, you can see humans red blood cells front view side view and then you see like the bird the bird right in the middle there aves they have a nucleus kind of crazy you look down at the amphibians or the sirens the amphioma the big old salamanders huge red blood cells because they absorb oxygen through the air through their skin so they have to have big red blood cells to grab that at the bottom, fish, they have funny looking red blood cells. If you look at the top, like elephants, round red blood cells. Cetacea, the big old whales, they have round blood cells. So yeah, we're, we're different in terms of blood cells. Know the formed elements on the next slide. You practiced them in your lab. You've got to know how to tell them apart because you're going to see pictures like the one in the background here on the test. Neutrophils, again, 
have about three or four lobes in their nucleus. You see that polylobed, polymorphonuclear sites, poly many morpho shape nuclear nucleus. So PMN, polymorphonuclear sites means many lobes or shapes in their nucleus. Eosinophils stay in red. They take up eosin. They're very rare. They're also PMNs. They have multi lobes. And basophils look like eosinophils, except they take up the basic blue dye. On a test, since it's black and white, it wouldn't be fair to put those two on there because otherwise they look alike. Lymphocytes have mostly nucleus filling up their cell, but they're smaller. They produce antibodies. The monocytes, which are a little bit bigger, like you saw on that last slide, they have a huge nucleus and they have a huge cell. When they leave the blood, they're then called macrophages and they eat bacteria. Mono means one. They have one big nucleus. Platelets, they're little pieces. That's what they call platelets, like a piece of a plate. Thrombocytes is the proper term. Thrombus is the clot. So they're and they're really not a cell, they're pieces of the cell. So they even clotting. And again, erythrocytes are your red blood cells with no nucleus. They're a nucleate. If you look at the top picture, you see a lot of those cells have a sickle or a half moon or a crescent moon shape. That's from missing one little mutation there. One mutation in the amino acids causes them to sickle when they get low in oxygen, change shape. They don't flow through the blood that well. So red blood cells normally have a biconcave shape, but like I say, the sickle cell disorder, they, they tend to clog up when they get deoxygenated. All right, so again, heme groups of old erythrocytes, they are reused to make bilirubin. Bilirubin goes to the liver to make bile. Bile, then emulsifies your fats. Bile is like a nasty, dark green metallic color, but... It comes out kind of brownish. It helps give your poop the brown color. So when I say your blood is responsible for the color of your poop, here's why. Hemoglobin is that bright red part of the blood that holds the oxygen, the heme group. So when they try to, re your body tries to recycle as much of that iron as possible, the Bilirubin then goes to, you see in the top, to make bile. And it comes out in the feces. Globin of the hemoglobin. Globin is a protein and it's broken down to make more proteins. So the body reuses the protein. All right, so we talked about the leukocytes. Neutrophil is the most abundant. You saw that in the slide. There are three of them in the slide. They're very easy to see. They have three to four lobes of their nucleus. They pop. They're really easy to see. 60 to 70% of all white blood cells or leukocytes are a neutrophil. They're called a granulocyte because you can see the little grains on the edge of the cell. It looks, it looks grainy when it stains. Multinucleate, they have many nucleus, and they form pus in the wounds. So a neutrophil also attack bacteria and viruses. They engulf them. They, When they engulf them and eat them, their little lysosomes digest them, and they put off kind of a greenish color. So if you've got green snot, thank you, neutrophils. Basophils, they're very large granulocytes. Their grains are stained blue. They pick up the basic blue dye. Basophils, basic blue dye, BBB. They contain histamines, which cause your blood vessels to dilate. It's called vasodilation. And they also give off heparin, which is an anticoagulant, so the blood doesn't clot. Both those go together to allow more blood in to attack the area which is being invaded by either a bacteria, virus, a protozoan, whatever. So in the body's defense, histamines and heparin are good at certain points because they keep it open so the body's blood system can fight the infection. The opposite of basophils, which stains red, is eosinophils. They take up the eosin dye. They have just the opposite. They will close off the area. Anti-inflammatories, they close it off. So they got antihistamines, everything. They close it down and try to keep the parasites 
tucked away so they can't go through the blood, so then they can help the body attack the parasites. A lymphocyte, again, is a small white blood cell, which is mostly nucleus, and they make all the antibodies. <clears throat> so the T lymphocytes will physically attack things. B lymphocytes produce antibodies, and they are the second most numerous leukocyte. They make about 25 to 35% of your white blood cell count. So you probably see some of those, you might mistake them for a red blood cell if you're not looking, looking closely. If you got a lot of lymphocytes, then you could have infectious mononucleosis, which is mono, people call it mono, or you could have a chronic infection. It's also an indicator of the AIDS virus activity. Again, a monocyte, they're huge. They are the largest white blood cell, and they will leave the blood called diapedesis, ped is foot, so they literally walk out, squeeze out the blood vessels, and become macrophages. And they engulf all this bacteria in that pore, and when so many of them do it and they die, they make a big white pus lobule you call zit. They're phagocytic against viruses and bacteria. Like I said, they make 3 to 9% of your leukocytes. And hematopoiesis. Poiesis is to produce. So red blood cell production all starts from a stem cell, all from one stem cell. And then those are educated in different parts of the body, where in the lymph tissue, they make lymphocytes. And the red blood cells, the megakaryocytes, which pinch off to make platelets, the monocytes, eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils, all then stem from the stem cells in different parts of the body. Here's a nice little diagram showing that how, during the red blood cell phase, the erythrocyte, after the orthochromatic normal blast, all of a sudden the nucleus disappears, and now you've got a polychromatic erythrocyte, which then becomes the erythrocyte. All that happens within the red bone marrow. So you can see the megakaryocyte, it's a big cell, and it pinches off to make platelets. Erythropoiesis, if hematopoiesis is blood production, erythropoiesis is red blood cell production. It requires folic acid, vitamin B12, iron, iron, vitamin K, and calcium. It needs all those to help make red blood cells. That's why those cofactors, those vitamins, are important for your body. So, vitamin B12, iron, vitamin K, calcium, that would be BIC, B-I-C-K, BIC, and folic acid, folic. So, folic, BIC. That'll help you remember you need folic acid, B12, iron, calcium, vitamin K. And when you got low levels of oxygen, that gets stimulated. The kidneys, believe it or not, detect the low oxygen in the proximal tubule of the nephron, and they produce erythropoietin, which is a hormone which causes the red blood marrow to produce erythrocytes. And when you get enough oxygen in the blood, it tells the kidneys to shut off the erythropoietin. So EPO is erythropoietin. That's a very good cycle to know. And they live about 120 days or so before they start getting damaged. And then the spleen will filter those out, break them down, the bilirubin becomes bile, and your body keeps making new red blood cells because they're getting damaged by running through those tiny capillaries day after day after day. Hemoglobin, again, made of two parts. The globin is the protein. The heme, when it's broken down, is converted back to biliverdin or bilirubin, and bilirubin must be converted in the liver to make bile. If you have liver damage and that bilirubin is not being converted, it's going to taint your skin yellow. More or less, they look at the whites of your eyes to see they're yellowing, and that helps you know if you're jaundiced. So bile is what gives stool its brown color. And we'll pick up here.